Welcome back to the Charismatic Voice. I've been wanting to check out the Tiny Desk series for a long time because it seems like a great way to dive deep into the voice and technique of incredible artists. We're going to start that today with Anderson Pock. And I chose him because I've been loving the music from Silk Sonic, and I'm super impressed with his ability to play drums and sing at the same time. Now, we're going to listen to just one of the songs from his Tiny Desk performance, Put Me Through. Let's get to it. She's still your ex? Yeah. Okay, yeah, cool. Nice. <laughs> He's got a new flex, right? A new day, huh? Okay, day. cool, yeah. cool. Let's do it. about the way he smiles when he sings and he has like an inner smile sound at the same time that just makes me love his music so much. It, there's a vibe in it that is, even though it's often about kind of sad subjects, I still feel like I just want to bop my head and, and dance along. <laughs> it's pretty amazing. The groove of this piece is just incredible, right? And uh, he's accompanied here, by the way, with the Free Nationals, which is a band that he often, often plays with, um, was more associated with them and Silk Sonic came a little bit later. So uh, I think it's so impressive to see the way he's having these more complex rhythms and uh, there's also like all kinds of details in the drumming as well, but he still sings a nice vocal line. And I think that that can be pretty difficult, especially because you've got feet and hands going at the same time. And uh, and then to think about a nice line on top of that is just tons of multitasking. I want to go back. Also, his voice is just so distinguishable. It's, ah, yeah, it's immediately recognizable as him. Ooh, good timing. He was ready. <laughs> so right away, that the when he says why, you hear a rasp that's in his voice. And this is pretty present all the time. It's just part of his natural tone quality. Again, so distinguishable, so unique. A lot of people, I think, would try to cover that up with vocal training. And I'm so glad that he's not done that. It's, it's a part of his natural sound. And... I feel like it has so much character in it. I'd much rather have a sound that has character and message than something that's just pretty. A lot of people can train to have just pretty, but something that's got character, mm, that's really interesting to me. One more time. Why the hell would you run this game? <laughs> Both my hands are tied. Afraid of thinking I've done my own. And if you watch his mouth throughout this, he's got really good mouth movement going on. Um, he knows that it's important to have rhythmic integrity just from playing the drums. A lot of singers don't think about how their consonants are creating that rhythmic integrity. So it's like every consonant that he's going through and every mouth movement, he knows that that's got to be perfectly timed to beat. And if he's moving his mouth more, he's able to create more sound from those as well add a little bit of articulation essentially so that he's also creating a groove with his consonants in addition to the drums. I 
a really good section where you could hear that vocal line happening clearly despite lots of rumblings underneath right you could really you could hear it almost feels like he's sighing and there's this like very broad brush stroke essentially that's happening with lots of little tiny subdivisions underneath i'm gonna go back just a little bit and then we'll keep going while longer a bit more time why would you run these songs across my mind mm. Mm. i love the way that they drop the instruments out there to bring more attention to that line a little while longer a bit more time why would you run these songs across and he does really subtle runs he's so smooth <laughs> it's like they're a little tiny subtle um, shifts of pitches in here. They're not, it's not, it's like little tiny runs that are in there, but they're so subdued. It's just like, so cool. <laughs> a little while longer, a bit more time. Why would oh. you run these songs across my mind? It's like. <laughs> Please believe me, as cool as I remain, there's a point in which I lose my self restraint. <laughs> he sings on here. It's so good. Most niggas would have left you lonely. I fancy throwing it all away. <laughs> He's playing with the vowel of on. So it's not just on, which is an ah vowel, even though it's an O and it's an ah vowel. On, right? On. You see his mouth moves shapes uh, as he's going through that. It's partly playing with the sound of the vowel and... Um, on. It's like it's playing with the resonance as it kind of essentially would like move along the cheekbones. But in addition to that, he also is keeping it really focused forward at that point. It gives it a little more feeling of like a little cry going on. <laughs> right? You see that mouth movement one more time there. First time, Drew. I love the uh that's in there. It's so, it just feels so organic. It's like a little beatboxing moment to add to that wonderful, wonderful drum. <laughs> Drums that he's like, ah, oh, man. I wonder if he beatboxes too. That'd be really cool. Those last three lines are a great example of one of his characteristic style moments. And it's not that different from some other singers that we've heard on this channel. It's similar to Meatloaf, similar to Moments of Dio. He's essentially doing a quick slide off of the end of each phrase. I call it sometimes a toss off at the end of the phrase. There's different ways you can describe it, but pitch wise what happens is he goes to a note, the last note of the phrase, 
And instead of sticking it on that pitch, he does a little slide off. Uh, it sounds more casual. It also at the same time sounds like a little more pain that he's going through. <laughs> Take it back a little bit. It must be what you put it So there's one side off there on through. Here I stand. Stand again. Time again. It must be what you put me through. And through again. Right? Ooh. Oh! section one more time. I, I love jazz music and I love particularly the improvisational factor of it. It's so cool to see musicians go out there and show off their chops and also allow them a, just creativity within that space to try something new out. Uh, a lot of times uh, when I've been coached in jazz or was working in jazz, I, there was a saying that came up that was, there are no wrong notes. You just have to learn how to, to resolve the wrong note into the right note. So it allows a singer or a pianist, in this case, the ability to really go out and try something. And if it sounds like maybe a note isn't, like, maybe it's a little too colorful for that moment, you know, you say, okay, well, cool. I'll just resolve it into the note beside it. And then it feels like it's, you know, in key and it was intentionally super spicy. So um, here, I don't know if he made any of those kinds of notes because he just sounded great the whole time. The point is, I think it's so wonderful to give musicians that creative license to just set loose and improvise in a performance. That's awesome. I really, I really enjoyed this section. Let's go back a little bit. Overuse when I let it ride. They're all those sides on the the way he switched his drum beat underneath that too to complement it. It got a, a little quieter overall, made some room for the keys to really show off. Keep going. It's got like a romanticness about this section too. They're just, they have fun and they're cool and they're spicy. I like it. Uh, he, it doesn't totally resolve at the end, but it kind of leaves you a little hanging. And you can see in Anderson's body language, the way he holds his posture up, like boop, boop. You can tell that he wants you to know that we're going to have this moment of silence. And then all of a sudden we're going to find out that that was kind of a surprise ending. <laughs> One more time. I think it's impossible to listen to Anderson Pack and not smile. It's just like so fulfilling to the soul. It's delightful. And I'm so impressed by the way he's able to keep so much rhythmic integrity with his consonants, but not disturb the vocal line. I love that. He's so smooth. He's so cool. And then in addition, just the groove of the song overall, the way it was featuring the musicians. 
I feel like that was really, really enjoyable to listen to. And this setting is awesome. I need to see more Tiny Desk concerts because it does allow me to get into the nitpickies of the voice. If you love Anderson Pack, you probably love him in Silk Sonic too. So I suggest you go check out these analysis videos of Silk Sonic and I'll see you over there soon.